Welcome to this Australian Earth Science Education video about what lies below. Mapping the seafloor is an ongoing global effort, but why do people care? To start with, most of Earth's surface is underwater. This makes us curious about what features are underwater. Knowing the depth of the ocean is vital for navigation and shipping. Ships may wreck if there is something underwater at the level of their hull. Finally, we learn more about Earth by mapping the seafloor. The presence of mid-ocean ridges and deep trenches proved vital evidence for the theory of plate tectonics. People mapped lakes and harbors using ropes weighted by lead or long poles that were basically big rulers. However, mapping the depths of the ocean required more advanced technology. The invention of sonar allowed more convenient mapping. Sound waves bounced off the ocean floor were used to calculate the depth. Sound waves can be used to draw contour lines and create maps. Here is a map of Lake Huron in the USA with colored contour lines representing different depths. We are going to simulate sonar mapping. You will need a box, graph paper, marking and regular pens, a ruler, a bamboo skewer, objects to map, a hand towel, some alfoil, and some tape. You may also want some blue tack and colored pencils. The first step is to make search grids. Roll two pieces of grid paper every two or three centimeters in a convenient pattern. I'm using every four squares. Write numbers on one end and letters on the side. These coordinates are like longitude and latitude in real mapping. Place a completed grid on the hand towel and gently poke a hole in the grid wherever your lines meet. This will make it easier to insert the skewer for mapping. Now make your bamboo skewer into a depth gauge. Color in alternating centimeters. Be sure to go a bit further than the depth of the box. When making your seafloor box, you may want to use blue tack to hold your items in place. If they move when you push in the sticks, you will have a difficult time mapping. When you've finished placing the items, tape a sheet of alfoil securely over the top of the box and then tape on the grid with holes in it. Now it is time to record the depth in our model ocean. Gently press the skewer through the grid and foil at each intersection. Count the number of centimeters and record this value on your other grid. When you have finished mapping, draw contour lines around each depth. You will need to try to make a smooth picture out of very coarse data. You may wish to color in each depth to help give a clearer picture of what lies beneath. Remove the foil and grid to compare your contour map with the real items. How close did you get? I suspect that the deep areas in the middle of my crocodile skull are the eye holes. On the contour map, they merge and connect with the ammonite shell. How do you think the mapping accuracy could be improved? Modern technology allows for more detailed scans of the ocean floor using multi-beam sonar on ships and submersibles. This gives us an idea of both depth and texture of the seafloor. Look in the Australian Earth Science Education blog to find out more about how seafloor mapping helped develop the theory of plate tectonics and why scientists are working to develop a detailed map of the seafloor by 2030.